this episode, Rio hits warp speed, 19.3 knots, a new record. An anchorage you have to see to believe, we'll tell you exactly where it is. Find out who kept the families fed, Mari steps up and wriggles in for boat repairs, and a village mission for gas bottles turns into beer and football. What a bonus. Yeah, the ocean has been good to us. Mari and I met in the surf, two salty souls combined. We got married and did what all married couples do. Bought a sailboat, moved into it, refitted it ourselves and sailed out into the South Pacific for salt water, sunshine and surf. Since then the crew expanded and so did the boat. Mari speaking, how can I help you? We quit our full-time jobs and are now cruising full-time on our catamaran Rio. We are currently in Fiji. Today is wet, wild and lumpy, but with 25 knots on the quarter and the spinnaker up, it is fast. We are continuing to make our way north today, sailing towards an island group called Vanua Balavu, which has a spectacular anchorage we heard about called the Bay of Islands. But first, we need to get there in one piece. I was belting along today. Yeah, a bit embarrassing for the media guy here, but I haven't worked out how to get clean audio in strong wind yet. So I'll fill you in on the bits you can't hear. You can see that's this guy here. We did have the spinnaker up before, but we was sitting on about 16 knots, got a bit spicy. So. Triple reef main with the screecher today. If anything, we need to slow Rio down. Give you a look at the sea state. Blazing a path. It's about uh, 18 to 24 knots at the moment, at about 120 degrees. So um, that's a great sailing angle, really. Nothing but big old ocean out there. A few squalls coming through, but uh, nothing that's raised the wind speed by more than about five knots. So it's not too bad. There's Mama. And there's a little pumpkin, having a little lie down. Give you a look at the chart plotter. Give you an idea of how we're going here. We usually run with uh, open CPN here, which kind of gives these satellite images, which are great. And then keep an eye on this guy, the chart plotter. This has all our sailing information. So you can see about seven knots in the wallows and anywhere up to kind of eight to 12 on the runs. True wind speed is here, it's 21 knots. The apparent wind speed is down because we're running downwind. There's a 10 there, you can see on those little runs. The average speed, um, the average speed over ground there, 8.7, which is really good. It means we're gonna to get to our destination fast. Also, something pretty exciting today, we hit a new hull speed record, I've got to show you this. 19.3 knots. 19.3 knots. And that is a new record for Rio, so I'm pretty stoked with that. So just how fast can, or should, a 40-foot boat go? As a guide, there's a calculation that should tell you this. A theoretical top speed for when the resistance of the water overcomes the power of the sails. You get it by multiplying 1.34 by the square root of the waterline length. In Rio's case, this is a top speed of only 8.4 knots. Clearly, this calculation doesn't take into account multi-hulls like Rio that can plane or surf down waves. Looks like I need to tighten this guy up a little bit. There's that wind's coming around from the east. Come 
coming into these protected lagoons on rough windy days is always such a treat. Nothing warms a sailor's heart more than a protected anchorage in bad weather. We did our Cebu Cebu as always and took a tour of the village. Lush and tropical doesn't even begin to describe it. We then head to a place other cruisers whispered about, the Bay of Islands. Hopefully we can make through this uh, spot here, it looks a bit shallow. Looks like there is a little bomby to the port side. Then together with our mates from the boat this way up, we did a raft up in what can only be described as a dream anchorage. I mean, take a look at this. There's a real cruiser's boat, anchored in paradise, lifelines covered in washing. And exploring in a place like this, you get to pick your deserted beach. Which one do you want? Still, the fridge is empty, so it can't be all lazing around. Time to go on the hunt. Hello, team. Hey. Yee, was that you? Unfortunately no. not. Can't find anyone. <laughs> Dr. Oh, wow. Joel for that one. Hang on, give us some names. Well, wow, that's a parrot. It's a doggy, green jubby, cold trout. Wait, that's a good one too. Nice one, yeah. That's another. That's another doggy. What's another that? Dog yeah, another doggy. And another parrot. Beautiful afternoon in paradise. And boat jobs. A bit of, a bit of depth in there. Do you want me to go and have a look? Putting a drop down ladder on the back landing step today. There's only one problem. My shoulders won't fit past the rudder stock and under the back steps. But Mari? Woo, perfect size. Uh, not yet, Cha Cha, thank you. Space I'm in. What wife doesn't enjoy confined spaces, fiberglass dust and sycophlex all over the fingers? Ah, that's why I love her. Done all the bolts up? Oh my god, I don't think I can get out of here anymore, I'm stuck. Look at the space I've got to get out through. 
<laughs> Engine bay. Pop it. So we've been out in the wilderness now for a bit over a month and our stocks are running low. There's no shops out here, no tourism, no hotels, no resorts, nada. Uh, but most of all, we're about to run out of gas. Um, we've got two big gas canisters and uh, we're almost out. So we're gonna do a mission on the dinghy today. Not great conditions for it. And uh, we don't even know what we're gonna find at the other end. Chop, chop, giddy up. Water, power gas for cooking. As long as you have the holy trinity, you can cruise for months. So, we need that gas. Just saw a local family in their longboat, said hello, quite a few kids, and uh, now we are just following their wash, because <laughs> it just flattens out all this chop. A little bit of local knowledge here with the reef, so we'll follow them. <laughs> Looks like we are getting a truck into Loma Lomo. There is a rugby game happening. Normally there's no trucks on Saturday, so I think we uh, were a bit lucky. Yeah, we're lucky all right. There's a big footy match in the big smoke on the other side of the island. So there's a truck coming to carry the team and the supporters. Here's our ride. Come a long ride today, but the gas shop is empty. No yeah. gas. No gas. No gas. Next week, yeah. No gas. Just the empty bottles today. Mm. Bad luck for us. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, try the shop on the front yeah. on the main road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try the shop on the main road. Okay. Believe it or not, they had gas canisters in here. So gas, eggs, flour, done. Eggs. We decided to go and watch the footy. Woohoo! <laughs> it's made out of bamboo. That's not the best set of goalposts I've ever seen. I don't know what it is. Cassava, lamb chops, eggs, sausage, bun. <laughs> so better food than what you normally get at the footy. We are supporting the Mavana Blues, of course. Well, for one, we need a ride back to the village. And you can't watch footy without a beer. This one is 12% alcohol, 12%. It turned us into unusually vocal football fans. Here to watch the local footy, having a little sip on the local beer. Hey, hey, hey. Vodka and Guinness. Cheers, Jolly. Sip it slowly. <laughs> Our football team victorious, our shopping mission a success. We even scored a ride back to the village. No speed limits here apparently.
doing close to about 80 down the dirt road. Pretty sure we just went past the police. Gave him a little toot of the horn and a wave. <laughs> Nothing to see here, no problem. Gas bottles, eggs, kids in the back of the ute. <laughs> you never slow down. <laughs> By the time we got home, we all felt just like this. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this video because of this incredible anchorage, well, this episode has another one of those that will blow your mind. Give it a watch. But if the sailing is what did it for you, then this video of our trip from Sydney to Fiji is nothing but sweet sailing. Some options there for you anyway. Subscribe and enjoy.